get in. I'd have forgot that. All right. Welcome, everybody. Hoping everyone's doing well. Uh, like I said, what a busy week this has been. We had, uh, you know, if you're on the agricultural calendar, which is a little di different than what Judah's doing this year and some of the other calendars, we just came through uh, the Passover. Um, we're in um, Matzot right now. Uh, unleavened bread all the way to um, the end of that. Um, and that'll complete our, you know, cycle. And then the rest of them will do it next month around when the eclipse is. And uh, we'll be moving forward with the calendar. Anyway, um, I want to I kind of touch on a couple of things before we get into our lesson today with uh, first we're going to do some vocabulary then i got a short video uh from art levitt who is a, a code researcher and, and a scholar who's uh got a really interesting video about tour codes and uh you know clusters and extensions and things like that that i'm going to share with you and then i'm going to show you a code and, and show you how the you know last week we talked about the ephod um so that that's one function of the code Another is the Bible interpreting itself and how you can use the code to confirm a matter, right? Um, what's in the underlying text and that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you that. And um, then we'll, we'll, um, we'll also be talking about a couple of things. Uh, I, I made some notes. That's why I'm looking to the side. I didn't want to forget. <laughs> uh, one thing I wanted to address um, uh, was, the, was the video that I posted, you guys in discord and if you watch that horrible thing uh where my life was being threatened um a lot of just way out there stuff and uh in, implying i couldn't spell my own name and you know i'm a liar this kind of things if you recall in the class and by the way that's what triggered this guy I, i've had interaction with this person in years but suddenly I think it was for a purpose. You know, y'all told me to put that on, on YouTube. And I, I believe it was for a purpose. Uh, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect this guy to do that and, and make such threats. But it goes back to what I had told you in the last class. That when you're doing this and you're making waves and, uh, you know, splashing in the ocean, you're going to draw some sharks. Some demons are going to come after you. Right? So that was a perfect example. I mean, within 24 hours, that, that guy did that. Right? So that was kind of bizarre and from left field i didn't expect that to happen but it did and um you know i had several people message me about that concerned um you guys uh, even though it's a federal crime and i and i looked it up it's actually a serious federal crime punishable with five years uh if you threaten someone's life on a platform or an email or a text message or a phone call um, because of the way that's done, it's, it's a federal crime. So um, he's probably going to have some problems um, down the road because of that. I'm not, you know, afraid at all. I, I'm not worried at all. I, I know he, he said the same thing over and over again, you know, and apparently this, this guy believes, by the way, um, just some backstory. These two guys believe that they're the two witnesses, okay? And I cut them off. Years ago, because we had disagreement over um, pre-trib rapture codes, and I did a series of those and did a 180 from my position, which I, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, by the way. He said I was a Baptist and a once saved, all, always saved. That's not true at all. <laughs> I'm actually a Hebrew who came out of the Pentecostal movement. And so um, and then saying that I fled to Hawaii, you know that's not the reason i'm here <laughs> i was actually compelled to come to hawaii to, to handle some business here um so just some left field stuff and then the fact that moses right the title of the video moses is coming to hawaii to kill jonathan moses is sean mitchell he, he believes that he's moses and he's called to do these codes however, however you notice you never see a code you see what he shows you on his phone which really come on we can't even examine these accusations uh, at all, right? And so this goes to another point I want to talk about in just a minute, it, which is honoring the code program. There, there's going to come a point where I'm going to give you this code program, you guys. 
And I was thinking about the, prof you know, how, um, you know, profound that is in comparison when I was in, in the Marine Corps and I'd gone through training and there came a day where they gave each one of us the Eagle Globe and Anchor, which is the Marine Corps symbol. It goes on your lapel and there's one on your cover and it's a very special moment, right? And it's a turning point from that point on. From that point on, you're called a United States Marine, right? And, and it comes with a code of honor, right? And so I, I kind of look at this the same way when I give you guys this code program in the sense that we can do harm. These these two guys believe that they're the two witnesses and I and and I, I have compassion for them. I feel sorry for them. I don't feel threatened. But if you get to a point, you know, some some people are unstable and you know that's why I talk on the phone with each one of you to, to do the interview is because some people are just not meant to do something like this. It's like giving a loaded firearm to a child. Okay. Because they can do someone harm. Or themselves harm. This is a serious deal. It really is. It's like going before the holy flame, the holy fire, like the high priest and, and how the ephod work, right? So um, that's why I, I told you that last week. To do evil or to harm someone using something that's holy will only bring destruction on you. And that's that's why I'm, I'm fearful for these two guys. I'm not fearful that something's going to happen to me, but something will actually happen to them. And uh, I think it will be very evident when it does. Um, <laughs> anyway, I don't want to go any in, into any any further. And I was actually going to show you guys a clip, but I'm not going to justify that. I'm just going to let y'all handle it and the authorities handle it. And I'm just going to move on um, because he's called me to do something. And that's why we're here today. And so I want to thank every one of you for being here with me today and being in this class. Um, let me start with prayer and then we'll get right into two more points that I want to talk about before we get into uh, today's lesson. All right. I'll be you. I'm just so thankful, Father, for this opportunity and this day that you've given us to gather in your name and gather in your word to study these things. Father, I ask that you open the, the hearts and the minds of those students that are here with me today and those that are watching later on this video that you would uh, walk along with them, Father. And help them to understand these concepts and inspire them in a mighty way. Father, we pray, we pray that you would uh, cover us with your uh, blessing and that you would protect us from the enemy. We ask that you encamp angels around all of us in this in this work that we do, Father, this this passion um, that I'm uh, trying to convey to these students. Father, that you would uh, see what we are doing and, and judge our hearts. And uh, we, we do this with, for your glory. And in the name of Yeshua, amen. All right. Well, okay. So, um, one uh, one other point I wanted to bring up is uh, Sita. Is Sita here today? Yeah, I'm here. I thought I saw you come in. There you go. Yeah. Um, I want to, at some point this next week, start um, the process of getting the code program in a file somewhere. Okay. Where I can start passing it around. And so I'm going to need some technical help on that. Um, there's probably another brother that's here that I talked to on the phone that also is a computer, you know, savvy person. So we got to get over that hurdle before we can okay. actually pass that to everybody. And then um, at that point, because it's an older program, you guys, this is Torosoft and I'm going to give you first. Um, we have to tell the computer it's okay to run the program because it's from the 2000, early 2000. And now we're in like Windows 10 and Windows 11. And what I notice on my machine is when I put it over here on this newer one that I got, um, when the Windows wasn't running. I had to go, you know, do do some um, modifications to it, like change the resolution and all that kind of stuff. And uh, tell it tell the um, the Windows 10 and 11 it's okay to run it. And so um, that's another hurdle that we got to get through with each one of you as we do these downloads. So uh, I want to ask you guys to be patient. I know everybody's ready to search codes. I got one. I don't know if she's here, but she's um, messaged me over the phone that she's already searching codes. I guess she's got a program. And uh, she was asking me questions at three o'clock in the morning, my time. <laughs> so I couldn't, I couldn't get to the, to the message until today. And uh, by that time, I know I had a backlog of people that are six hours ahead of me and, you know, 
um, they're already messaging me. So uh, my date starts hitting the ground running with with the messages. So if uh, she's watching, um, I've seen your message. I just haven't been able to respond to it yet. And, and um, kudos to you for jumping right into deep end and searching codes already. Right. My goal is that we all progress with this uh, together and, um, you know, encounter these hurdles and, and uh, questions together because it's a great te teaching opportunity. So, um, Sita, we'll, we'll be in contact on Discord and uh, come up with a time where you and I can meet in Zoom and hammer that out. I don't even know what okay. that process is. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. All right. All right. And so the other thing is, uh, you know, rules for the class. Um one thing I've, I've, I realized after talking with everybody is, is you guys, we are coming from different backgrounds and different walks uh, from all over. And then I want to be mindful and, and um, you know, tender to that um, for each one of you. And so I, I would ask that each one of you have patience and uh, respect for one another and where each person is in their walk. We're not all, all on the um, same page of music yet so to speak so we're all just kind of getting here and getting to know each other and um, some people are, are more advanced in some things and some are just discovering right so uh, just have some patience for one another and I think we'll do fine don't let things divide you um, especially you know petty things that, that are not salvation issues and things like that right and uh, that's it that's all I had on that so let's jump right in you guys with some vocabulary and then uh, I'm going to show you what I have for you from Art Levitt on some um, methodology and some things that he's developed and some things he's discovered. I think it's very fascinating, um, his pre presentation. It's only like 20 minutes. And then um, we can transition into um, me showing you uh, what you can do with the code program if you're, if you're searching something out. One of the very first things I started with was, um, there she is when I started searching codes was I was interested in, in looking for things that, you know, you'd see in the scriptures, like for, for instance, the two witnesses, right? The scriptures plainly give us one, but it kind of alludes to the other. And, and, and you know, um, you know, what's true, what what's not true. Right. So I would search that out uh, doctrine um, like preacher of rapture, mid trip, all those kinds of things. I, I've done all that. And then, you know, any any kind of thing, the seven thunders that you see in, in Revelation, the, the voice of the seven thunders, who is that? And how do we reconcile that, right? Is Because if the Bible interprets itself, that meaning the answer should be in the encoded text right there <laughs> in the text. And so um, I'm, I'm hoping you're going to see that when uh, Art does his little presentation here in just a moment. So if you guys got your notebook, I'm going to give you your first um Vocabulary word for today, and I want to take it to one of the translators. There's actually two that I use. Google, and then the other is uh, do it in Hebrew. But for sake of this presentation here, I'm just going to um, use Google. All right. Very first word is Gentile right gentiles or goyim that's what it is in hebrew and you spell that with a gimel a vav a yod and a mem gentiles which is the plural you could you could also say also say gentile goy but with a mem it's plural so that your that's your first word gentiles you're going to see that over and over again who is the Gentiles? Very interesting teaching on that. All right. Very next word, mountain or har, which is two letters, the hay and the resh. You might see har Sinai or the Mount of Olives. It's a hay and a resh. The next one's also just two letters, and lev is that word, and it means heart. It's also uh, it's also kind of broad, especially coming to, to you know biblical Hebrew. It can it can also mean mind or your will, uh, right? Lev, lev is heart. Lamed bet. The 
The next word is Navi, which is prophet. That's a noon, the bet, the yod, aleph. Navi. And I keep seeing people coming in. Uh, I got to be mindful of that while I'm doing this so they can make it back in. Prophet is Navi. The next is servant, which is Ein Bet Dalad. Servant. It's also a slave in the biblical sense. Ein Bet Dalad. Next word is ear, which means city or town. And that is Ein Yod Resh. Ear. If you wanted to pluralize that, it would be Irim, cities. City, ear. Ein Yod Resh. The next one is voice, and that is Kol. The Kof, the Vav, and the Lamed. Voice. Like you'll see Kol Yahuwah, Kol Yod Hei Vav -Hey. The voice of Yod Hei Vav -Hey. You'll see that. Or anybody. Um. In, in a spoken sense. Kuf Vav Lamed. The next one is Shem. Shem, which means name. Have you heard the Jews say Hashem? What they're actually saying is the name. And they do that when it comes to the Father's name. They, they don't say the name. They just, they just say the name, Hashem, right? So name is Shin Mem. Shin Mem. And it's the root of another very interesting word that we're going to talk about in today's lesson with the ten virgins, right? With the word called Shimin. He said, let me show you that. Shimin. Google shows it as fat. Uh, in, in modern Hebrew, that, that's essentially what it is, but it's oil, right? Or um, like if you are crushing olives, the fat of that olive is olive oil, right? So it is a, it's an oil is what it is. So fat is what it's, um, Google is going to tell you. But you want to, you know, sometimes with some of these words, you want to dig a little deeper because it's a broad use. It could be used in a couple of ways. Like, for instance, in one of the scriptures we want to look at in the King James, ointment is used, but it's the same word, shemen, shemen. But see, see how it's very uh, versatile, okay, depending on the context and what, what you're talking about. But the, the point is, there's a root word in here, right? Shem, name. And then you add a noon and you got oil. So there's a connection to those two words. That's going to be significant just a little bit later. All right. So Shem and Shimin can be, um, you know, the, I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Eight and nine should be, I think. Shem and Shimon. Name and oil. And then we have Torah, which is a Tav, Bav, Resh, He. Google's very generalized. <laughs> calls it the Bible, but again, you got to look a little deeper. Um, it's still correct in a modern sense, but Torah is specifically the first five books. Torah. Tav, Vav, Resh, He. All right. 
Everybody got it. So that's your vocabulary for today. We'll, we'll have more next week, and we're going to keep building on that. These are words and phrases you're going to see over and over again. And um, the more we get, we'll, we'll it'll be more along the along a phrase, right? The voice of the the, the voice of Yod Yod Hey Vav Hey, which is a series of letters, or Achret um, Hayamim, the end of days, or Hine uh, Yamim Bayim, which is uh, behold the days are coming, which are these long phrases that you'll see. And you'll start noticing it, the, the sequence of letters over and over again. So we're going to learn those. So when you see them, and quite frequently you will, especially in the prophets, um, you, you know what's going on there. So we'll build. We'll just keep building them. All right. All right. So let's transition right on along to um, Art Levitt, who's been doing this for many years. He's an Orthodox Jew, so have some patience with him. Um, but he's got some interesting finds, and, and I think it's a, a good teaching point here because he talks about clustering and uh, extensions and how those are found. I've talked about that briefly. Um, you know, in the uh, Jonathan, my servant, there was extensions on that that uh, came after the fact. OK, so um, let's let him talk here for a minute. Proof, proof of codes. Welcome, uh, this is Art Levitt speaking from Jerusalem with my friends Kolov and Yishai. Uh, I've been working on codes for 21 years. I moved around the world to Jerusalem to meet with Professor Rips. He's on the right there. I'm in the middle. These are some of the people that I've been working this with for here. 21 years. Uh, on Torah codes, also known as Bible codes. And I'm going to try to show the difference today between the amazing and the ordinary. as a million to one difference. And we'll hopefully see how that goes. So how do codes work? We have uh, an example in English. The codes are actually in Hebrew from the Torah, from the text of the Torah. But this is a English example to show how it works. This is the form we use, it says, uh, etc. We remove all the spaces between the words, and what happens is that we fix the margins. In this case, it's 10, 10 across, 10 letters across, so that we can read words um, vertically and diagonally instead of the normal horizontal direction. This will happen in any text. You can't avoid it. But what happens in the Torah is you end up with very long words or very clustered uh, patterns that you don't find in any text, at any other text. Um, so, so there are some of the patterns and it's really important to focus on patterns, not just random arrangements. Uh, there's three main ones. There's one dimensional, like this example says codes in, in Hebrew, in yellow, with the word true afterwards. So it's a one dimensional code. You don't need the vertical because the skip is so small. <clears throat> the second pattern is called extensions. And we see that in this example, the code of God, yellow and red, also true. So the extended word, uh, after finding the code of God, we notice the extension says true. So that's in another, that's a very important form pattern. And the third pattern is clustering, which we will see quite a bit. Um, here, three names of God are in a very close cluster vertically. They all have the same skip, so they're all parallel. Uh, now, why do I focus so much on patterns? Because <clears throat> the more rare something is, the more amazing it is. We all know that from life. 
but when you're looking at codes in the Torah, you have to get used to what is what is happening a lot versus what is happening maybe only one time in the whole text. There's 300,000 letters in the Torah, so you, any any text the size that size you will find what looks like uh, amazing coincidences. But only if you know how rare something is, will you be able to measure it. So let's see what goes. What, so so let's say let's 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 look at the difference between an ordinary and an amazing prediction uh, prediction one is you will see a taxi in New York and lo and behold I go to New York and I cross the street and I see four or five taxis so not only one taxi but I'm seeing them left and right whoever gave me this prediction is he's a genius but not really because we know that taxis are you can't avoid taxis in New York Okay, so it's very generalized, right? So there's a difference between being specific about something, right? Like some of the codes that I, that I showed you in the last class of, that the Father revealed about me was very specific content and then all the, the corresponding uh, information that's there. But he's, he's, he's pointing out something really profound in this, um, uh, in, particularly about priori and uh, post-priori terms. So... This is the night and day difference that we're talking about for real codes versus non-codes or trivial codes that are unfortunately um, out there much more often than I'd like to, to see on the web or in, 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 and even in books. <clears throat> so here's an example of uh, what you'll find on the web, which is basically a whole bunch of taxis because these things have no pattern to them and you can't avoid taxis they're all over the place they happen to be you know related words but it's easy to find in such a large matrix uh, so many related words and the person who did this threw in his own agenda uh, political agenda with the word on the lower left no pun intended uh, but I don't I try to stay away from this uh, randomness and I try to focus on this kind of prediction where I call it life repeating dreams or life repeating art um, so there's a Twilight Zone episode from 50 years ago that I like to refer to this is a nurse who works in a morgue and a poor woman is having a dream that she's walking towards the morgue and the nurse opens the door and says, there's room for one more, honey. So uh, it's kind of a scary dream. You take notice of this dream. You don't have a dream like this every day. So that's, that's part of the formula. It has to be something that really stands out uh, the first time. And then it, ha and then it repeats in an, am in an amazing way. Uh, a week later, this woman gets on, the, gets on a flight on a small airplane or starts to get on the flight and the stewardess who looks just like the woman in the dream opens the door and says there's room for one more honey so she pretty much takes off and saves her life because the plane did crash after that so this message it's the same words repeating in a very interesting way and that's what we look for in codes for example Spaceship Columbia, this is uh, the best meeting of those two words, spaceship with Columbia. Uh, we'll see, yeah, so connected to that is the words, the word they will mourn in Hebrew. Now, a lot of people look at this and they say it looks like a spaceship with a missing wing. So we're interested in this wing right here. And if you guys don't know, he's talking about the space shuttle Columbia. Um, and the code found the, the very first what they found was Columbia and then the, the extension that they saw later um, down at the bottom and then uh, as it developed it turned into a pictogram is, which is also something you, you might see sometimes where your actual code is is making a picture in and in a context if you'll if you'll uh, actually see here if you remember what the space shuttle looked like um, Try to imagine exactly that. Exactly these code. five letters. 
there could be actually thousands of ways of putting five letters on this table that we're looking at, literally thousands of places to put them. But we're interested before we even look in these specific five letters. And it says, finished by fire, which is what happened to the Columbia. There was a hole in the left wing, and this is the left wing because it's facing down. And it caused the fire. And to repeat the whole, the whole uh, idea, in the plain text it says a consuming fire. Eish This is, uh, this is the only place where the word fire in the Torah is combined with something that means consumed. All right. So, so what he, what he, what he's pointing out, out here, you guys, and I, I know you 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 saw Glazerson's table earlier which was very stretched out and not a lot of clustering he doesn't really uh go into the plain text a lot in that um it, with any context um but if you if you look at this and look how it's clustered in this text right with things that are have close proximity like consumed by fire right and then um basically another way of saying it right with other corresponding anomalies that are just not normal right and not definitely not random it's not seeing a bunch of taxis um you know something that you would expect to see and there is something called r values in these letters and, and um we'll, we'll talk about that another time when we get into some of the probability stuff um but there are some codes that, that are amazing and super incredible and then there's some code that are just kind of uh eh, you know and there's even some that, you know, if you had really e evil intentions and you tried to force something, you could, you know, t twist and turn different things and then come up with a narrative, um, which is kind of what, what those two guys did, um, thinking that uh, Yah is telling them to come kill Jonathan, right? But I'm telling you, there's destruction at the end of that stuff, right? You'll be able to discern at some point what is a you know, statistically valid or what's just kind of random because there is an element of randomness in this. As a matter of fact, these codes is hidden in a sea of infinite randomness, right? But sometimes you have these anomalies that seem to come together, that paint a picture and the corresponding text all are pointing to something. Uh, so um, let's continue with it. Thousand letters, this repetition is right where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna throw in a few details because when you look at some of these codes, I don't want you to be mystified by some of the uh, symbols. Um, here is code of God. Uh, and this dalet here is the fourth letter of the alphabet, of the Aleph Beit in Hebrew. And it means the fourth book of the five books of the Torah. So that's the book of Numbers. And this nine at the top is a skip distance, which is also the width of this matrix. Every nine letters, we go to the next line. And in the orange and the green, we have the chapter and verse. If you learn what the letters correspond to, this is twenty-four, chapter 24, verse 17. Uh, finally, we have, we give credit on many of the codes to the people who found them. This is uh, Eliyahu Bloom, a colleague of ours. Um, but basically, the, the code on the left is what we're looking at. Uh, but if you're interested in the details, there, there they are. <clears throat> so how do we prove codes? And what we're going to do is prove the overall concept. We're not going to prove any one code. Uh, Let's look at specific examples. Codes about codes. Uh, code of God has a continuation of the word signs, which is used in Isaiah 41, 23, and other places in Isaiah. It can also mean letters. It's a very interesting continuation for a code of God, but it's not repeated yet. And I'm not happy until I see something confirmed so let's look at another place where code of God occurs. 
The first one was actually um, Sofen in Hebrew, which is the older language, uh, the older format. The new one is the modern Hebrew, which is pronounced like the English code. And what he's talking about there, you guys, because this is two different codes. That he's What he's doing, he's triangulating here. I, I use that term that I coined in the last class. He's looking for another table with the same common nominee, but he switched it up a little bit. So, because this word is Zophan, yod heh vav he, with the extension of Otiot, which is signals or signs. And he has code of, code of yod heh vav he, uh, letters, so signals or signs and then he looks with the modern word which is code yod he vav he, and he finds something really similar so code of god in the on the right side and it is continued with the same word now that's and that's pretty really amazing how... this is two different codes um one's going one way and you know it's going from bottom to top and this one is going in in you know a same fashion, but with the the OTO is reversed, but the same effect. You see that this is a great triangulation in proving something. Is, is everybody follow? There, okay, so these codes are confirming to this. These codes are signs. These these codes are signals from Yahweh. All right. One word in the right place. Uh, can be very significant, as it is here. Uh, God's names. Um, these are the three main names of God, as he tells Moses in uh, Exodus chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. He says, I used to be known as Kael Shekai, but from now on I'll be known as Hashem, yod ke vuv -ke. And God is the one speaking. All three names are the name of the one God, but he takes on different attributes uh, according to these names. Okay, so these are in a very small area, but let's see, it really is Kael Shekai, not just Shekai. And what do we have? Actually seven occurrences of Kael with Shekai. So it's it actually is a complete, uh, all three names completely there. Now, let's change the color for a second because we're going to focus on the red and the blue, the two main names of, of, of Hashem, Hashem and God. We're going to see if they repeat somewhere else. And the best place to look for them is in a long line uh, because there's only one in the whole Torah in such a long line. Uh, by the way, the, if you notice the rashes there in red, they're, they're really haze. But uh, we don't want people to, to print this out and throw it away because that's not respectful to Hashem's names. So they're printed here as rashes, but they're really haze. So it is, again, Hashem, God. Uh, <clears throat> and it's the only place in Torah where they occur in one long string. And we have Kael Shekai occurring in, an, in a phenomenally repeating pattern, Shekai appearing on the right four times, Kael appearing on the left 11 times. So this is, um, it's hard to overemphasize how unique this is because it, if you look through the entire 300,000 letters, you won't find such a repetition of Kael Shekai with this skip. Only here, next to the only occurrence of Hashem God. So this is what we're talking about, unique occurrences. You know, even though the Torah has 300,000 letters, uh, we're talking about unique occurrences of things occurring right together. Um, okay, so now, more repetition on top of the repetition. This says the name Hashem Akel in light blue. Now what what we typically do is we find this somewhere else in Torah, and here it is in a different place with the skip of 103. And what do we? What would be surprising for us is to find the red and the blue again, Hashem and God. 
And in fact, there is God and there is Hashem. And it's in the ideal location right next to extending from what we originally found. So you don't need uh, rocket science or higher math to be able to estimate how amazing this is. The Aleph here, for God's name, is about 1 out of 10. Because if you randomly look at letters, 1 out of 10 will be an Aleph. The Lamed is another 1 out of 10, very roughly. So you've got five letters here that are 1 out of 10. So that's 10 to the fifth power, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, is 1 in 100,000 chance that that word would be right there. And we have a right to measure that because we that's what we expected in it before we even looked. Uh, you get there's an extra bonus for this word appearing here. Um, and all every one of these codes is is at least one in a thousand. Most of them are a few orders of magnitude even more unlikely. <clears throat> here is another one with the simplest form of I am a shem vertically with skip of only 16. And what do we have right on top there is your God. Again, it's about one out of 100,000 because there's five letters, each 10, one in, one, in, one in 10. And this is the most common continuation in the plain text. When it says, I am Hashem, it, it almost always says your God right afterwards. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I don't know how to give this over so that you know how amazing it is. Uh, after 20 years of looking, I, I understand immediately how amazing it is, but my challenge is to, to, to show it, to show it to others. Amazing. I'm curious, I'm curious about the space, like 103 space in between. Is right. that also have Gematria and Kabbalah to it? This uh, 103 uh, is probably probably has a lot of meaning. There's, we're only scratching the surface. We don't know a lot of what we're seeing. Uh, sometimes we do see some really interesting things with the numbers. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, there's actually a whole thing with Fibonacci numbers that I can show you sometime, which is uh, also phenomenal. Um, with the name Yudke Vuvke appearing with skip 5 and 8 and 13 and 21 and 34 and 55 all in the beginning of, of Leviticus which is you know the Fibonacci series mm -hmm. so that's a definite signal as well um, it's, it's encoded within nature as well exactly uh, galaxies, weather patterns mm -hmm. I really wanted to include that but it's too much <laughs> so if, if you heard it, good Okay, uh, let's look at some things related to Messiah, also called Mashiach in Hebrew. Here's the smallest skip of the Messiah, HaMashiach, skip of five, continued with the word joy, going in the other direction, but uh, extending from it. And the word rejoice overlapping, Simchi. So let's look for it somewhere else, which is our standard procedure. And by the way, we look for it somewhere else because we're trying to confirm. For, for years, we were trying to tell people who were skeptical, yeah, we were really looking for this. We promise you, we were really looking for it and we found it. Because a priori is what that's called. You, you, you look for it before you see it, you look for it. And it's an extremely important concept. But we couldn't prove it to people. Well, what happens is the codes are proving it for us because the codes themselves repeat. So the first time it occurs, it announces the second time. And here it is the second time. It's a priori the second time. Here it is joy and Mashiach appearing in a column and the word simchi, rejoice. And there's only a, you know, a few more interesting places where that word rejoice could be. Um, Yeah, just, just to talk a little bit about a priori, you know, like if you see your friend Sam on the street, you haven't seen him for 10 years, it's interesting, but it happens to everybody. Mm -hmm. But if you say that morning, I'm going to see Sam today, that's an a priori announcement. And then you see him, you've narrowed it down from a thousand 
old friends to one old friend. You've narrowed it down from a thousand days to one day. So it's a million to one, a thousand times a thousand. More interesting than if you just saw Sam without saying it first. That's why re repetition is so important in all of this. Because the repetition establishes the a priority, a priori. Uh, okay. So here's another example of joy and Messiah somewhere else with a very small cluster. And it's continued with the word revenge, which we will, we will see again. And if you, if you read the Torah and the Tanakh, you'll see that the, that the idea of revenge is very important with Mashiach. It sounds harsh, but you know, our world is a bit harsh sometimes. <laughs> and people who are doing evil, uh, we think the world is chaotic, but uh, the codes seem to tell us that in the end there will be justice. There will be revenge for those who have it coming to them. Uh, we're gonna see this word again, repeated as usual. Uh, but first let's look at some more with joy, joy and Mashiach again, very small skip of eight in the same line. And it actually forms a whole sentence. Joy is coming, Mashiach will rise on high. Another optimistic kind of idea. Now let's look now at- Now just something on that real okay. quick is, is all those extensions that were found, um, just starting with a, with a baseline word. So you always want to look in, in the column where your, your term will appear because quite often there will be extensions. They're not always. And so this is where um, translators come in real handy because you can see the sequence of letters, go to the translator and, and put those in. Even if you don't know any Hebrew words, anyone can do that. Does everybody follow? So when, when that happens and you find an extension, and sometimes it says a phrase, sometimes it's just more additional information that is pointing to something, um, right? It's, just, it's statistically valid. It's, a, it's, it's something that brings credibility to whatever that you're looking at. Does that make sense? All right. Now he's about to show you something because uh, he did this years ago, you guys. And uh, so it's kind of dated. He's going to show you a bin Laden code and um, how bin Laden was actually connected to 9-11. I know a lot of people don't believe that, but I personally believe because I've reworked this code that he was a patsy. And just like the JFK assassination in any time uh, wickedness is done with with the charade, um, there's usually more information there. And so I did rework that and, and found a connection to Mossad and, and some of the conspiracy stuff in there. So um, the code is valid. It's still telling us something. And it's statistically one of the, the, the most amazing ones I've ever seen because of the number of extensions that are there. It's just uh, to type that in uh, and then find that in one in, in, you know, a column and where it starts and what it runs through and looking at all those um, scriptures. Uh, it's just mind boggling. And uh, th these co computer programs do have the ability to show you the probability and statistic data and all the uh, P values, R values, all that kind of geek stuff that we don't really get into. Um, it is capable of showing you that. And when you see the numbers, it's like, oh, my gosh, I can't even fathom that number. Right. How many zeros is that? <laughs> right. So uh, it pushes the boundaries between randomness. And, you know, something that's put there intentionally, as, as you're about to see here. As the researchers I'm involved with, we were all very busy at that time of history. Um, so we found many things. Uh, one of the simplest is just the word Ben Laden. He will appear many times. All right, right out of the gate. He looks for the name Ben Laden. And like I said, sometimes you just want to look at what's above it and what's below. And these are called extensions. Uh, in, incidentally, Kodesh Kodeshim, the Holy of Holies. Um, th this is really interesting because the mem that's in this is where Mossad is in the code that I found. You know why that stands out to me? Because Kodesh Kodeshim is is in code, uh, is runs right through the top of the Donald Trump table where it has his name and Again, clustering right next to his name, it says the name of the assassin like this. Well, that is touching Kodesh Kodeshim. And so I theorized this is like an inner circle kind of clandestine kind of thing, right? There is a Mossad 
connection to this table and telling you. in any text the size of the Torah so just seeing the word Ben Laden is not interesting but it starts to get interesting when you see the continuations cursed is Ben Laden think of other adjectives blue or shiny they're not relevant they're not powerful like cursed look at the continuation here revenge belongs to Mashiach there's the idea of revenge and Mashiach all in one line with Ben Laden it's not normal it's not it's not a random, it's not taxi cabs in New York. Um, okay. Uh, so then we have also some other interesting words I won't get into too much, but destruction. I will give you the nick nickname of destruction. Very fitting if you look at how that word is used in Tanakh. Because cities were renamed Horma, destruction, after they were destroyed when we were settling the land thousands of years ago. Uh, so the whole act of renaming is connected to the, to the word destruction. So I will give you, Bin Laden, the nickname destruction. In other words, you are toast, Bin Laden. In other words, there is justice and there is optimism behind the chaos in our world. Okay. And just in case we're not convinced that this sentence was intentional, Let's look at the last two words. Revenge belongs to Messiah. Here they are again, just repeated with uh, in the same location, just colored differently. Revenge belongs to Messiah. And this has a skip of 6598. It's the fourth minimal skip. You don't have to know what that means, but I, uh, okay, I said it. <laughs> ben Laden appears with many different skips, but this is the, the fourth minimal. So, he appears in interesting uh, patterns in other places as well. In any case, Revenge Belongs to Mashiach has a skip of 6598. Let's look at the same skip somewhere else. The same skip, 6598, and Revenge appears in a different place. Here it's in, in the right side, it's uh, in, in Genesis. On the left side, it was in uh, Leviticus. Uh, it only appears three times with this skip in the whole Torah. And this one happens to have, belongs to, Mash to Mashiach, crossing it with the smallest possible skip of two. So again, it's a repetition, which confirms the original message. Okay, I'm gonna fly through these uh, and feel free at home to rewind, but it's the same concept of extensions showing repetitions, showing the intention, light. Uh, one of the, the, the first things, the first thing that was created, uh, light from light. We, we learn from our sages, including Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkanus, one of the greatest sages of the Talmud, including Rashi and others, that light comes from light, that God created light from light. So Nachum Bambach, one of our con, uh, colleagues, found light from light crossing itself in a very interesting pattern. Waves of light is the continuation. Light appearing again, not yet interesting, but look at that continuation, the light from God. Seven letters continuing uh, right there. Uh, another place. I couldn't get a pause fast enough, but notice that clustering of all those terms and how they appeared there. That is that is showing you a structure. There, there's right angles, and it's not just kind of scattered all around. Now, some of those codes where you do see scatter, it's not that they're not relevant. Um, it, I would say more along the lines they're, that they're incomplete, um, and we're not seeing some of the, you know, just anomalies that are not normal where where you're seeing things in, in line right angles you know running through you know each other same kind of clustering like that is you know statistically noteworthy right with skip of only two the light from light with the word god vertically with the word formed god formed the light from light 
which is what the sages tell us. Another place, light from light. Continuation, Yudke Vuvke, from Hashem. Again, from light, or horizontally. The hidden light extended from that. Waves of light from light, we saw those same words before. From God, in an extremely small cluster. Light from light with a skip of only two. With Yodke Vovke, Hashem. So, so it goes on and on, the, the, the repetition. But what, notice something else. We've been looking at really um, important things. Why do we do that? And because the question could arise, well, what happens if you look at thousands of topics, you're going to eventually find something interesting. But look what we look on the left side, look at what we've just been doing. We've been looking at codes about codes, codes about God, codes about Mashiach, codes about one of the biggest news stories in the last few decades, 9-11, codes about light. So these are top importance. And what if only these things uh, succeeded and everything else failed? All right, so he's given us his opinion here on, on some things. And first of all, he's, he's orthodox, and he only searches the Torah. We push the boundaries on that and go see what the prophets have to say and see what old uh, Brother David said in the Psalms and uh, some of the other writings. And lo and behold, we find codes. So um, I disagree with some points that he has you guys so we got to understand what background and where he is in his walk okay so um i agree with him about codes about codes that is a great study the names utmost importance that, that that's kind of what sparked me into finding restore the name yod and and call upon the name which is on the same cylinder right i went down that rabbit hole and was on it for a long time and, and man the revelation that are, you find these impossible things that are just not normal, right? Two different sides of a cylinder. You have virtually the same number of letters on either side. You know, call upon the name, restore the name. Even though it's not clustered together, it's like it's bookends on the scroll or something. It's, it's just amazing to me, right? So um, I love the guy. Uh, he's not very active these days on uh, the internet. I don't know what's going on with him, um, but uh, yeah, he's he's been doing this a long time, so I got utmost respect for him. It's still interesting because the most important things are encoded. It turns out that that everything else pretty much succeeds, so that's not a question. But it's easier for us to focus on the important things because those are. Uh, finite and, and we, we have you know only one lifetime to look at this stuff um, so yeah um, what does it all mean I take two simple meanings from it all uh, the codes about codes and about God and about light to me they, they're like a signature that somebody wrote this Torah not uh, not to some random people uh, and what about the codes about Messiah and 9-11? Anyway, he gives us a summary on what he what he uh, learned from that. In his study, now he was he was doing studies on this. He's put, put a lot of time. You know, he, he had a thought process. He came away with a conclusion. And so I want to transition from that to what I want to show you next. And how many here? Let me get out of this. Um, which is what I was talking about earlier with... Um, you know, reconciling um, something in the Bible, like a parable. <laughs> you ever, guys, you ever thought about that? You know, some of the parables that we read in, in the scriptures, um, you know, you can get a thousand different interpretation of any one of them, right? That, that you should, spe specifically the words of Yeshua. <laughs> um, but everybody has an opinion and a thought on it, right? But what is there a way to maybe the Bible interpret itself and maybe there's a code or codes that triangulate that subject matter and gives us more information. That's what I want to show you. And it's, it, 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 to put it into words, it's like looking at a diamond and just kind of turning it around and looking at all the perspectives and, and um, how that thing is just beautiful. Uh, you know, you'll start seeing this with your codes and some of the things that you're working on. It will get that involved. Um, 
I did warn uh, maybe in the uh, orientation class about, you know, you can lose track of time doing this uh, because you kind of drawn in. And, and again, you can be in no better place. You're actually in the word. So, you know, how lovely it is to dwell in your house, right? Just like that song in the beginning of the class. That's why I play that. It's a it's an amazing thing to dwell in. And uh, sometimes you, you, the Holy Spirit start working and start revealing things to you, right? And so that kind of happened to me when I was um, considering Matthew 25, which is a parable, very famous one. Where'd you go? There you go. Here's what it says there. You guys know it. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil. So this is really, we, we need to uh, make a note of that. You know, there's the concepts and uh, what's being talked about in the parable. We have to consider all these little details, what's being said, right? But the wise took no oil in their, uh, excuse me, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried and they slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made and behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. Then rose uh, rose the virgins. Then those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, "Give us of your oil." So they were not prepared. That's why they're foolish, right? They didn't have oil. Oil is a is a subject here, but there's a connection to something else. I don't know you, which is a personal thing on a level, right? If you know somebody, you know their name. Right. If you're betrothed to someone, there's a relationship there. You know who that person is, right? I know you. I don't know you. That, that's that's night and day here. So oil and I don't know you is connected in some way. Watch. We're going to watch something here. Give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answer is saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us. And you. But, but go ye rather to them that sell and go buy for yourselves. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came and they were uh, ready. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins saying, "What? look at this, Lord, Lord. Now I know this is the, this is the King James. But something really profound is being happening right here because we see something else in matthew 7 i think it is where yeshua said um there'll come a day where they say lord lord we did all these things in your name right specifically in your name and he says something profound i don't know you implying there, there was not a relationship there you guys right so see where where the holy spirit's taking me on this i'm considering all of these things in my study going down this rabbit hole on oil and name and the sin because there there's root there as i showed you with your um vocabulary words the only difference is a noon shim and shimon so oil and name and how we know that is because he says i don't know who you are right here lord lord open to us but he answered and says verily i say unto you I know you not. So these these five foolish virgins have got a problem. They're supposedly to be betrothed to this bridegroom, and they're not prepared, and they have to go and come back, and the bridegroom's already come, shut the door, and, he's, and when they say, Lord, Lord, he says, I don't know who you are. And then the end of it says, watch therefore, for ye know, uh, for ye know neither the day or the hour where the son of man cometh. Right. So there's a lot of things being implied here. Right. And I'm trying to consider this. What is the meaning of this? And so I go down this trail looking at um, the Hebrew. 
as you will do when you're trying to do the same thing, right? And I don't have that program on this. I got an ISR interlinear. Let's do it with, with Bible Hub. Okay. So I want to go to Song of Solomon. Because this was part of the process. I I had I was cross-referencing the, the word oil and where it was used in different places of the Bible. And and with this interlinear program that I want you guys to have, you can type in the word oil and it'll show you every place in the scriptures where it's being used. And so you can go cross-reference all these um all these places. So in that process, and I'm sorry I'm I can't actually do that because it's not on here. Um I can take you just over to to Bible Hub, um, same same one we're reading the English from, and we can use the interlinear here, which is a little different because you can't type in the word and see everywhere it is. At least, well, at least I haven't learned that on this one. But anyway, we can go to Song of Solomon and see something here. Maybe we should read it in English first. Let's go back to English, right? So it led me, the cross-reference led me here. I'm looking at the other use of the word oil right and sometimes it can be broad, broad you know um it can be the fat like the fat of the the olive um it can be ointment right and quite often ointment the use of that way in that context is it's still olive oil but it's used as a carrier for something like um peppermint or um, some of the some of the essential oils because that's what this actual verse is talking about, right? Because of the say, all right. So it says, "Let first of all, this is about a bride and a groom." Everybody know that Song of Solomon is about a bride and a groom and a chamber and all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> he had dropped me into his chambers, right? So this is storyline here of a bridegroom and a virgin. And we're talking about oil again. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. Because of the savor of thy good oils or ointments, thy name is an ointment poured forth or an oil poured forth. Wow, how profound. And then to add to that, look what it says next. Therefore, do the virgins love thee? <laughs> right? Okay, so I started, I'm looking at this word, Shimon, as we can see with the interlinear. Again, I like that other program better. Um, I think it's verse three. We see ointment there in the English, but it's, uh, it's Shimon. Shimon with the N on there. Root word, Shim or name. So there, I'm seeing this polarity thing or this this kind of playful use of the, the words there with this root thing with oil and name and I don't know who you are, right? And then being betrothed to a bridegroom and a bride, you, you guys, you wouldn't marry somebody if you didn't know their name, right? So the fact that we got these, these, these maidens, Bethula, virgins, that is supposed to be patrolled to this, this bridegroom. And he says, I don't know you. And then we see this play back and forth. Can you guys see where I'm going with this? Right? So I'm considering, wow, is the answer to the parable of the ten virgins in another place in the Bible talking about basically the same thing, a bridegroom and a, br and a bride and virgins and oil and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so I go, started going down that trail. I'm thinking, okay, how can I see if there's a code that can confirm this? And so I would get around just pacing around, just thinking and asking God to inspire me. And the thought occurred to me. So if this is a thing, if he's telling us that his name is the oil point, because that's where I was leaning, you guys, that it has to do something with his name is the oil. Right. Because that's something they're lacking. And by the time they get to the door, 
Notice it's not about the oil anymore. It's about, I don't know who you are, meaning we're not on a first name basis. Does everybody follow me, the logic here in this study? So, like I said, I started walking around pacing and, and it occurred to me, if this is true, if he's telling us that his name is connected to this oil somehow, then maybe there's a code that says, my name is the oil. Right? Logic, logic, that's logical thinking. Maybe a word of knowledge coming to me. Who could say? So, I went and looked for it. <laughs> and uh, let me trans, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move over to this other machine is what I have that code on. Where'd you go? Huh? I should have had it queued up. I've got like eight codes opened up on this machine here. So just a second, guys. Technology, eh? <laughs> All right. So I have, and let me, uh, let me reduce that font down just a little bit because I was looking at it really closely and my eyes were hurting, so I needed it really big. So we're going to back it down a little bit. And it was there. It's actually encoded twice. And, and this is the one I worked. Um, and so, you know, along that process, you know, I saw some things in the plain text, like uh, Kodesh unto yod heh vav hey, holy unto the Father, right? Which his name is. We know that. But also um, the word parable is, is in here parable and uh, the, the codes in the purple right there was a tool help me reconcile this and then we see in a vertical anomaly a living parable right there see the symmetry and the clustering of that uh, also I saw in the plain text in the day of distress, why is that significant? Well, look, we, you know, the prophets tell us in the day of distress, what are we supposed to do? Call upon the name of yod heh vav -Heh. That's what it says. The King James says Lord, which is, it's not accurate. Uh, that, that was changed. It's yod heh vav -Heh. So if we don't know yod heh vav -Heh, how can we in the day of distress call on him? Right? So this is really profound to me as I'm seeing this. And this is why you hear me use the proper name of the Father. And people pronounce it different ways. Um, and I think those are fine. Um, computer was here. Computer was used. Um, you see it in the green, but also in the plain text there. Right here. Um, the virgins in the white. Yeah. And then, you know, some really interesting verses from prophets, um, like like the, this one up here talking about uh, the name of Yohei Bob. Hey, um, but that's not what brought it home for me. It's, it's the one down at the very bottom in the blue. And so, uh, you know, it would take a long time to go through all these verses. But I want to take you right here because this is what drove it home to me is when I saw this. And then I was like, OK, that's it. Right. And this is what happened. So let me share that with you. So I'm working this table, working it, working it, going line by line, doing all these verses and look specifically going there and looking and seeing what runs through the table in all these places. 
and you know, and you highlight what you think is is the Holy Spirit speaking that this is significant. Maybe has a con context to the the term you're looking for, but when you see the place where you get the idea pop up, now that to me is is really interesting. Is it there? No, that's Nehemiah. I'm I'm a little too far down. Is it this one? Yeah, right here. Sorry about that. It's right here. Interesting how it has a, a you see, and I should have known this. I haven't, I haven't looked at this in a long time, you guys. I should have known this, though. But, but you see how there's a correlation between the living parable anomaly that's there? Right here. Living parable. At a right angle to, to this verse, right next to the, the search term that I found, my name is the oil, is Son of Solomon. Same place. Let me just back it up because it runs right through there. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for his love is better than wine because of the savor of thy good ointments or oil. Thy name is an ointment or oil poured forth. Therefore, do the love the virgins love thee? There's another witness to this code with all these other anomalies. You see how we built this, right? Let's. What else does it say? Draw me. We will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers, and we will be glad and rejoice in thee, and we will remember thy love more than wine, and the upright uh, love thee, right? So it's about a marriage. It's the same, it's the same story, just a little bit different, but the same kind of common themes going on. And so that's what I mean about the, the Bible interprets itself, first of all. And so when you start doing a word study and looking at entomology of things and cross-referencing, because that's what will happen when you start searching codes, right? <laughs> You'll get on these rabbit trails of study. And we're going to show you all the all the tools to do that with. Um, I apologize that I don't have my favorite interlinear on this computer yet. This, like I said, this is a newer one. And so uh, I couldn't show you that. I had to show you Bible Hub, which is another good one. It's just not as, as uh, it's not my favorite. Some people may like it. But, but anyway, so that's how I use. And by the way, there were other codes that I looked for along this lines, like 10 virgins, um, you know, to triangulate this concept. Does that make sense? And that process, you guys, no joke, was probably about four weeks of work searching uh, probably 10 different codes on that subject and looking at things that different. That's when I found restore the name, call upon the name on the same cylinder. You know, it was on this whole name thing. And after that, I was convinced, wow, uh, I think his name is actually pretty important <laughs> so and so that's where i am today now i don't i don't judge anybody where they are and what they call the you know yeshua or, or the father um just for them to be aware everybody is in their own place right so um that's just an example and i don't want to get preachy that's just an example of how i you know i i use the codes as a tool to help me come to the conclusion of something um and uh, I think it, I think it's a valuable tool, and uh, it's, it's uh, I think something that you guys will find useful in in your own lives, whatever whatever you're searching out. The only thing I would stress is that you do it with honor and with for the right intentions, right? Not not to hurt hurt a person, uh, which is what these two knuckleheads have done, and uh, they're going to pull the fire. Of the most high down on them with doing stuff like that I've, every time i've seen something like that happen and it's not the first time another time you know there's a cult out there and this guy calls himself rayel and what does he do he's got a he's got a cult following that use the code program to convince people that he's the return yeshua okay yeah i'm not even kidding 
And he came across my feed one time years ago. His name is his name is Raymond Lear, and he's actually a criminal, um, a con man, and uh, been on the FBI wanted list and all that kind of stuff. And he fled to South, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Baja, Mexico, and took his cult with him. And he scams people out of money. They got Bitcoin stuff. This guy's bad news, right? But he uses the codes, and you can find these videos on YouTube. Rayel, Lord Rayel. This guy is a scam artist, and he's going to bring hellfire down on him for doing that. That is, that's strange fire. That is bad, bad stuff. <clears throat> so we're not teaching you that here. And <clears throat> so my only um, thing with you guys is just, you know, this is an honor system. I'm putting my trust in you guys that you, you're not that kind of a person and you wouldn't do that kind of thing. Right. Searching your name, searching your family's name, um, looking for, you know, purpose. Uh, I think the Bible will speak to you clearly. You'll you'll see things that you've never seen before, but you were kind of expecting. You'll have like a foreknowledge of it. With, and sometimes I think the father puts it there. So that when you find it, it's like, oh, my gosh. Right. You'll see what I'm talking about. And so you'll know that, that there's a point where this uh, after the training wheels comes off, as I told you guys, that, you know, you're doing this thing and um, you can do it. All right. Uh, you just need somebody to teach you the skills and some of the technical things. <clears throat> you guys got any questions so far? I've been talking so much. My mouth is dry. I got to get some water. Be right back. Don't go nowhere. Sorry about that. I had to get some water. Again, you guys got any questions or any kind of concerns or um, things you want to ask? And and by the way, you guys can come to me at any times. If uh, actually somebody did this past week, um, you know, they were curious about my position on something and if it would be a problem if they believe differently. And that, I won't go into details. You guys, you can message me about anything. We can talk on the phone or, or whatever. If you guys got something you want to talk about. And, uh, yeah, um, what is the interlinear? It's called the ISR. Um, I got it on this other machine. Let me show you. Where's it at? There's a download somewhere um, for this, and it's it's um, it's been out a while. A while. Having technical issues with this other machine. It's my older one. Here it is. It needs a it needs a tune up. <laughs> it's a, it's also where I got all my codes too on it that's why i've been bringing it up i've been trans trans uh spot what do you transpose i guess all my codes from one to another anyway here's what it looks like um you know it's got a couple of keys up here like this uh little flashlight thing and as you can see i typed in new moon and i was doing a, a word search on this because some people have an issue with the word um kodesh Kodesh is a, a in Hebrew is a synonym. It's it's versatile. It depends on the context used, whether you're talking about a month or you're talking about the head of a month, which is Rosh Chodesh, right? Or the new moon, right? Either it's it, if you're talking about a new moon, you're talking about a new month. If you're talking about a new month, you're talking about a new moon. You see what I mean? It it means the same thing. Rosh Chodesh. It's not a trick from the Jews because somebody went 
and you can do it. Go type in new moon <clears throat> in a Google translator, and it's not going to give you the biblical <laughs> new moon. It's going to give you the modern words for that, which is um, uh, year rock. Year rock is the word moon, which you can find in your scriptures, right? You can type in moon, and it'll show you every, it'll show you new moons and all moons in there. And you can see that there are times where the context, meaning they're specifically talking about the moon as an object and the word year rock is used. But when you're talking about the new moon, right, it is also talking about the new month. It's spe specific time in history. It's when the moon is darkened and we go into a new cycle and it starts to grow again. OK, so I did a word search on that and you can see there. Hodesh, new moon. You can click on it. Um, you can look at, um, I believe, uh, the Strongs in here. It, somehow, <laughs> it's kind of versatile, and um, you have to just navigate and, and turn around and you know look at things yourself. But it's called the Interlinear Scripture Analyzer, and. Um, when I figure out how to get it off of this machine and put it on this one, I'll also make sure we'll have it available somehow for you guys in the um, the file that'll have the, the code programs. OK, so you'll have access to that. It's great. You can look at um, the Old Testament, New Testament. I think you can even look in the uh, Greek um, in the New Testament and stuff. It's pretty cool. So that's what it looks like. Any more questions? Uh, I'm hopelessly confused, Jonathan. With? <laughs> With translating. See, things are going obliquely, right? And and the spacing. And if it's just one after the other letters, then, okay, I can read it possibly. Right. How am I going to know that it's, you know, going across something or diagonally? And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm just really confused but i trust yeah. you and you see well here's the thing all right ago. so here's the, here's the process and and, and i'm going to show you this it's it's and it, you're probably trying to quantify that in your mind and you just you're you're terrifying yourself it's not really hard the computer does all the work matter of fact this is why i say that we have such an advantage um that isaac newton didn't have isaac newton searched codes by hand looking for codes and uh, it took a lot of time doing that and if he had access to a computer program that could do this, um, sky's a limit, right? So um, because we have that and we can use these other um, technologies, translators and things like that, um, you'll get it. You It'll come okay. to you. Now, there is an element, uh, and this, this comes with some tenure in it. The more you're looking at a Hebrew text and you're seeing something over and over again, there will be times where something jumps out at you. You'll kind of see it in the plain text as you're as you're scanning, because there is times where you're looking at a text on your computer and you're scanning and 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 looking at the sequence of letters there to see if anything jumps out, any words that you might recognize. And, and if you don't know words, you can go to a scripture analyzer or, you know, look at it with with the code program where you can see the English and the Hebrew and go line by line and see what's being said there. Right. That would be amazing. Yeah, English so you have Hebrew. access to yeah. all of that, all of it. And okay. I'm going to show you how to do that. Yeah. Okay. So, I trust that it will be easier. But now, right now, I'm thinking, how on earth am I ever going to do this? It's like. Yeah, and I knew that would be a thing. So it, that's a real fear with some people, especially learning a you know so-called another language. Even though we're not learning modern it, biblical Hebrew, I believe is a little more forgiving. Uh, especially with with things like grammar, you don't really know how to pronounce pronunciate something. You just need to know the sequence of those letters, right? In other words, read it. And I'm okay. going to show you. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, okay. And again, show you how to use the technology and the the um, programs and stuff that we have access to. Yeah, I think okay. you'll be. I think you'll be relieved. It, it's not going to be difficult. Uh, um, I started from listen. Foreign language was hard for me in, in high school, and I studied uh, Spanish and barely passed that. And, uh, you know, so learning Hebrew was like, oh, wow, that's a mountain. And so what I learned was um, 
you, know, you start with the basics and that's what we are doing here with the letters and you build on that with you know some vocabulary especially words that you're going to see over and over again in the text that you're going to be searching i think it'll come easier than um just trying to learn words and phrases that are useful in life like ordering a falafel in jerusalem right this is reading your text you're going to be able to read it because you're going to see this over and over again just like you have in whatever language you read, like some people read the scriptures in Spanish, some in other languages. Um, you know, I had students in here from many different countries when I was doing this a couple of years ago, Norway, Finland, um, you know, most remote places. And they have Bibles in their own language. And so learning Hebrew and searching codes was kind of, you know, kind of another, it's like, I don't know. First of all, they didn't, some of them didn't really speak English that good. So that was a, like a, a second language to them. But then to learn some Hebrew on top of that, right, it was another step for them. Right. So um, but they did it. They actually did very well. And, uh, and we, we oftentimes use, you know, technology. Right. Any more questions? I don't see anybody's. All right. All right, you guys, that's all I got for you today. If there's nobody else that want to ask a question, um, I'll get this upload as soon as I can and over at uh, Discord. And uh, we'll see you at the same time next week for another lesson. All right. And also we're going to be working, we'll be working with Sita this week to try to get that program in a file somewhere so that we can start doing downloads. All right. So, Daniela, are you are you saying you got are, is your hand raised or are you just giving me a thumbs up? Uh, I think it's just a thumbs up. All right. Let me pray over you guys and we'll see you in uh, Discord over there. Abba Father, I'm just so thankful for each and every person that's here today that's joined us in this class. Abba, I pray that you go with them in this week, that you uh, keep them healthy and protected from the enemy. Father, that you... Um, open yourself up in their word as they start pursuing you in this thing. Uh, bring them back at the appointed time in next week. And uh, we ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right, Thank you guys. You. I appreciate Bye, every one of you. Yeah. Shalom. Good night. Thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Shalom. Good night. Everybody remember Scott. He was supposed to come. I don't know why he didn't. He might have been feeling bad. <laughs> yeah. It's easy to forget and get busy. Amen. All right. Shalom to you guys. Shalom. Good night.